What we looked at here, we've known that women with benign breast disease are those women who have had a breast biopsy for, say, a mammographic or a palpable abnormality in the breast. And uh, these women are considered at slightly higher risk of breast cancer, at least some of them. And so what we tried to do is, can we identify certain risk factors that stratify them to say these are the women at higher risk and some of them are not at high risk? In order to do that, the two factors we've looked at here are one is mammographic breast density and the other is age-related lobular involution. Mammographic density uh, is a known risk factor for breast cancer because women with very dense breasts uh, are at higher risk for breast cancer than, those, than women with low density breasts. On the other hand, um, lobular involution is a process of physiologic atrophy of the lining epithelium of the breast. And we have seen in prior studies that as women's in lobules involute or atrophy, their risk decreases. So women with complete lobular involution are at lower risk than women with no lobular involution. So these two factors, one is a radiologic marker of breast density, and the other is a tissue-based marker of lobular involution have been associated with breast cancer risk. So what we did in this study is, in a population of women with benign breast disease, so they had a breast biopsy showing benign findings, we had mammograms available on the women. We also had tissue to look at lobular involution. And then we followed these women in time to, de to determine who developed cancer and who didn't. And the study resource we've utilized is um, the Mayo, ben Mayo Clinic Benign Breast Disease Cohort. This is a cohort of over 9,000 women and who have been followed, their ages from 18 to 85, followed over time. And we have information on who developed cancer and who didn't. We took a subset of these women 2,666 women, wherein we had both mammograms and tissue information on involution. And that was this group we studied to determine is involution and dense, our involution and density independently predict, independent predictors of future breast cancer risk. So we, in this study, what we had were the 2,666 women, and we followed them for a mean of about 13 years. And what we found were that women with that both mammographic density as well as age-related lobular involution were independent risk factors for breast cancer. What we also found was that women with no involution of the tissues and mammographically dense breasts were at four times higher risk when compared to women with complete involution and non-dense breasts. The significance of this, again, we are trying to at least understand a little more about breast cancer risk factors. Where it helps us is in building risk prediction models so as to be able to predict a woman's risk of breast cancer. In women with benign breast disease, while building a risk prediction model, we can use both density and involution as markers or variables to be used in building the model. And so what we found here is unique in that this has never been shown as independent. Both density and lobular involution um, has not been seen as independent risk predictors in a population of women with benign breast disease. So there is a now, this is new information we have shown. And um, so yes, it helps in the development of a breast cancer risk prediction model, particularly for women with benign breast disease. Women with benign breast disease, some of them have a condition called atypical hyperplasia. Uh, and that's a condition where we're talking about the possibility of medications such as tamoxifen or raloxifene. And so it is very helpful if we can build better models to say, who really should be taking these medications and who may or may not benefit. So which type of benign breast disease and are there markers in that that may help us select women who should be taking, who should be doing more in terms of um, 
reducing their risk. And also stratifying who may not have to worry in terms of future risk. Uh, so I think in that sense it helps to separate out women uh, based on their risk. Um, what is important here though is the two factors, the mammographic density and age-related lobular involution are both subjective measures. So uh, we do consider that as a, you know, it's, it's it's not an objective measure that you can get out of an image or tissue, so it is reader dependent. Um, the other thing is this is a fairly, uh, s this population is predominantly upper Midwest population, so there are issues of generalizability. So what we say is it is really important to repeat this study in a more diverse population and see if it holds up in a variety of populations. Um, but it is, you know, it is a s the strength of this study is that it's a really large, well-characterized cohort of patients where we have good information from mammograms and tissue. So we have information on mammographic density, we have information on lobular involution, and uh, so th that's good uh, data that we can utilize. Uh,